Tonight, from First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio, it's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Jacoby Brissett and the Cleveland Browns. Taking on Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. It's been a wet and dreary day by the shores of Lake Erie, but we have football at First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. Tonight on this fine Thursday night, we've got a good one in store between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Cleveland Browns. McPherson has this one teed up and off we go from Cleveland from the six and a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30 yard line so here come the Browns for their first drive on offense bringing this crew out it's someone known for his big arm since he entered the league back in 2016 Jacoby Brissett spent the early years of his career bouncing between starter and backup as needed and played well but never had a team fully commit to him as their guy he does retain the toolbox that made him projectable as a starter big strong player with a powerful arm deceptively mobile and tough to tackle the best part about his game leadership and being a great teammate so first and ten now from the 30. Brissett going to go to the air right away. And there is Amari Cooper, his first catch. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. Brissett. That's caught by the tight end, Harrison Bryant. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they've become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. Now he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Call that a very strong gain of 24. That's an excellent read right there. Saw cover one. That means it's just a single high safety. So you know if you throw the ball to the outside part of the field, help is going to be a little bit late getting there. And he puts one out there for a big time completion. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 32-yard line. Brissett again. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. A first carry now for Nick Chubb. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. 
It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. A nickel look now for the Bengals as they try to stop him here on third down. Brissett sets to throw it. Flushed. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. There's Sam Hubbard that time in there to bring him to the ground. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. And this won't get there, won't be on line either. It's no good, off to the right, and this will remain a scoreless game. The Bengals set to take over. I'm about to say something that seems really obvious, but you hate to see your kicker miss on the opening drive because now you're starting to wonder what goes through his head. Mm. Is that going to affect him the rest of the game? Is he going to be able to bounce back? You want to show confidence later? What's going to go on with him right out of the gate with a miss? Yeah, chance to grab the 3-0 lead here at home. Instead, we remain scoreless. On first and 10, Joe Burrow. That one taken in by T. Higgins. And he's brought down. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. First down there for T. Higgins. Don't let it be lost in Jamar Chase's phenomenal season. The Higgins had a big year for Cincinnati as well. Topped the 1,000-yard plateau for the first time, and he did it despite missing a few games with injuries. The third-year man could give Cincy a pair of pro bowlers at the position here in 2022. Now Burrow on first down. And that would off the mark behind him, incomplete. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now it's Burrow. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Going with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field have covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Burrow looking to pass. That's caught over the middle by Hurst. And he'll get this only to about the 38 as they stop him a few yards shy of the line to gain. So the completion good for six yards. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. That pattern and scheme was well defensed on third down. He tried to just sprint from one side of the field to the other, and they got it to him quickly. But no chance at yards after the catch there, and they stop him short. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good, and this will remain a scoreless game. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, OK, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. 
But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. We're set on first down. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. They go with Chubb on second down. And they regroup defensively after the broken tackle, getting to him just beyond the 45. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And four C in completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. The Bengals with two extra DBs, a nickel look on third. Blanketing the passing lanes. Now Brissett. Looking deep downfield. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Von Bell. And the Bengals are going to have great field position here as this is returned just shy of midfield. So they tried to take the deep shot there, but this defense up to the task. And a lot of times when you air a ball out like this, if it does get intercepted, there's going to be a lot of space out there to set up a return. And remember, you've got five big offensive linemen out there playing on their feet in open space. Not a skill most of them possess that allows for extra yardage on the return. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. They start near midfield following the interception as they begin first and 10. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 49. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he's going to take this across the 50 into Brown's territory. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Man open, that's Jamar Chase complete. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Burrow to his old LSU teammate Chase for a Bengal first. Here we go. He'll drop to throw. And he'll go right back to Chase. That's caught again. And he'll be marked down at about the 26-yard line. Now, that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage. And that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area. So you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Here's Burrow. They'll set up the screen here to mix him. And he's brought down here just outside of the 20. We're scoreless after one. Second and six. This is Mixon on the draw. And he's going to have a gain of 11 to the 11 before he's brought down. First and 10. 
What makes a draw play like that successful? Well, we did see where he made the first wave miss, and that was a big part of it. But a lot of it is just being actors back there, making the defense think it's going to be a pass. Now a first and 10 at the 11. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. And he's going to go down, sacked right around the 17. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Hindsight is 20-20, partner. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground again. Well, it almost looked like the O-line was run blocking again. I mean, they opened up a big hole last time. This time they opened up a hole, and the quarterback got sacked. Certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. Another try after the first down sack. Burrow. Under pressure, and they got to him again. Jadavian Clowney dropping him for the second straight play. Might want to think about blocking him here on third down. Okay, let's go back a little bit and see if my schooling comes to the front. What's that old saying? Those who forget the lessons of history are doomed to repeat them. That's the same guy who's gotten back-to-back -back sacks. I think a double team may be in order. Here we go. So that'll leave Burrow and the Bengals with a third and long after that sack we just saw. Back to throw here. Incomplete. Nice call by the defense there on third down. Just flood the field with extra defensive backs in their dime package. Nowhere to go with the football. Forces the incompletion. So on fourth down, off goes Burrow. On comes Evan McPherson for the Bengal field goal. From the right hash, it's a 41-yard attempt. McPherson's kick is good. And the Bengals are on the board first here. It's 3-0. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense. The firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. This will be fielded inside the five. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. Ready to take over again on offense, out comes Cleveland. As the offense comes out here, Charles, uh, maybe perhaps a bit more of a focus on the run game for this drive after tossing an interception on the previous one? I think that's a good way to look at it and a good way to think about it, but maybe they get to it in a little bit different way because after you throw an interception, you want to make sure you keep your quarterback's confidence high. So maybe give him a couple easy throws that he can complete and then get to the running game and try and get things settled down. Yeah, and still in the first half here, a long way to go. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. But no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Here's Brissett. That's into a crowd and intercepted. Picked off by Von Bell. And he will bring it back 
It's a pick six for a Bengals TD. An excellent play there, CD, on the pick six. And I, I think they, were they a nickel? Did they have an extra DB out there? Yeah, Brandon, I think they were in standard nickel, not the uh, Buffalo, as teams like to call it, meaning three safeties for big nickel. They just wanted to take away the quarterback's throwing lanes, and that's exactly what they did and came through with a big-time pick six. Evan McPherson now for the PAT. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Another opportunity now for the Browns offense. And this not an easy situation. You're down early in the elements. You're on the road. How do you get the mojo back? Well, one thing is to remember that as an offensive player, you have a much better idea of what you're trying to accomplish and where you're trying to go than the defender. So in this case, because you know it, you can make your cuts with a little more decisiveness, maybe a second fake, some double moves, things of that nature, to go ahead and try and put some pressure on the defense. They begin this drive with Chubb. A very good move, but for a relatively modest gain out near the 32. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Second and five now. Reset. And getting this just shy of midfield. They'll spot it at the 49. Just what the Browns needed there. Good for a gain of 17. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. First and 10, Brissett. Swings this out for Hunt. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. Second down at five. From the gun, here's Brissett. Flushed out right. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. 157 to go in this first half on EA Sports. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. To throw is Brissett. And this one nearly picked off. Well, kind of surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away, but get away it does, and it's second down. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again, or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. Throwing again, Brissett on second and 10. Got an open man, that's David Njoku, the tight end. 
And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Brissett now. And he'll be brought down at the 27. Really? Really? Did we just see that? That's a big catch. One-handed, I might add, to pick up a first down. I was going to say on third down for the defense, it's one thing to give up a reception. You just got to shake your head on a one-handed catch to pick up the first. and 10 here and you know if they could just get three out of this something about whittling it to a one score game in half that might provide a psychological boost now a throw here going to be taken in by the tight end to Joku now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half of scrimmage the 15 it's first and 10 from the red zone now Brissett eluding the pressure right and a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete well, let's see who this is on and they get Jack Conklin there the right tackle They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. And in the air once more, it's Brissett to the left side and complete for Amari Cooper. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Second down and three, ball on the seven. Throwing, Brissett. That's complete to Peoples-Jones. And he is going to lose yardage here. So that'll go as a four-yard loss on the play. Third and seven now. Well, it looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. They were there, and they tackle him for a loss. And a nickel look here for the Bengals as they try to defend this on third. To throw, Brissett. And they're going to get him. They bring him down to the sack back in the 16-yard line. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. So they won't get a touchdown, but here's a chance to at least get three to end the first half. This a 33-yard attempt. York able to send this one through, and they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to 3. Well, still trailing here, but they do get the late field goal. Now their defense will try to keep this score right where it is, heading into the locker room. Yeah, and trailing it to break, you obviously don't want to go in off of a negative play. Give them credit for that one. Finding a way to put points on the board. Give them any type of a spark, anything to build off of as they try and plan a comeback. Game 
So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kicks away. This one fielded at the five. And up to about the 26 yard line just across the 25. Time perhaps for one final kneel down before they take this lead to the locker room. And with time running down, they go down to a knee. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has been a hard-hitting affair to this point, and you got to expect we'll see more of the same in the second half. And to bring the action your way, let's get it right back out to Brandon God. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. Same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half from the six. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26 yard line. And hold on here because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. Well, hopefully, obviously, nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek and we'll take a break. Bengals drive about to get going. And they've got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half, or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. And I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation to pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. I think the best offenses love to get the ball to their running backs in open space because they have the ability to make people miss and they also have the ability to run over people. And if you do that throughout the game, after a while, they might just run through some of those tackles and go a long way. Well, we saw him shed a nice tackle on that play. From the 30 on second down, Burrow. And that'll fall incomplete. He was hit just as he let that go. And now it's third down. It's always tough trying to keep your guy upright when he's trying to throw the football. When you're dealing with those big, bad guys on the defensive front, it's even tougher. And this time, those guys on the opposite side won the battle, getting to the quarterback and knocking him into an incompletion. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Burrow will throw. This goes out wide for Mixon. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Give him six yards, and they do convert on third. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? 
So from the 36 now, first and 10. Again, it's Burrow. Steps away to his left. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. Oh, I saw this one with defensive eyes because even as he escaped the pocket and bought time, the coverage stayed tight. Nothing broke down. Throwing it away, that was his only option. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Now Burrow. Escaping the pressure right. Well, it's a shuffle pass, and it's complete. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. And on third down, the Browns going to go with a nickel set. Now it's Burrow. Buying time to his left. Finding Mixon here again on back-to-back -back plays. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Sometimes it's designed, and sometimes you just have to know when to leave the pocket and move and make something happen. And on that play, he was able to get on the run and was still accurate throwing the football. A couple of first downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Mixon with a first down carry. And some solid footwork there as he'll take this down to about the 38. That one good for 15, and the Bengals get a first down. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 38. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Flush to his right. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a halt. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble and it's second down. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit, and he gets a small gain on the play. To throw again on second down. Burrow, and the catch made, it's Tyler Boyd. And he's gonna get this down near the 25. Off the play fake, here's Burrow. That's to Chase, he's got it. Touchdown, Cincinnati. Jamar Chase, 25 yards for the touchdown. And the Bengals take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Circle that drive because that might be one to remember well executed to give them a little cushion. Well, let's take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it, keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab, jab, jab. And finally, the haymaker to put that drive away. McPherson now for the extra point. It's up and good, and that makes it 17-3. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was Jamar Chase who finished it off with a touchdown reception.
After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Taking it about the one. Now a hit and a loose football. And the Bengals grab it. And his guys are going to get the football at the 23-yard line. So problems compounding themselves here on the return. They just give up the touchdown, and now they lose the football. Yeah, partner, things are starting to unravel a little bit for them right in front of our eyes. They're going to be looking for some answers quickly. And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. Say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. The Cleveland offense ready to go. Well, the opposition laid down the challenge and opening drive touchdown here to start the second half. And Charles, now you feel like this group needs to get an answer because this all of a sudden is a two-score game. Yeah, you're right about that. What was a small, magical spread to overcome? A little bit more daunting now. I think you're exactly right. Pressure is on because you don't want them getting the ball back with a chance to really extend this lead out. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. And again, it's Chubb. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Brissett. He's got Njoku, his big tight end. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. Here's Brissett. Being chased out left. And they're going to get this down near the 35-yard line. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Carry now for Kareem Hunt. And a solid run down inside the 30. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. They've created a nice sustained drive off of plays like that. A nice strong run there that keeps them advancing the ball. The last run got six, now second and four. 
They'll set up a throw. That's to the right side and complete to Najoku. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 13-yard line. That one good for 16 as the drive continues. Good yardage on the completion there. When they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Flushed out right. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. Well, it certainly appears to me that the defensive guys are starting to look a little bit tired while he still has some fresh legs. Not the biggest gain we've seen on a scramble, but still some positive yardage on a play that initially looked like a sure win for the defense. Throwing again on second down. Brissett. This is caught. Seven yards on the pickup there, and now they'll have it first and goal. But correct me if I'm wrong, yeah, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Brissett. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Amari Cooper, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Browns have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. So how about that for an answer? They get the touchdown there, and it's back to a one-score game here in the fourth. And that's what these guys have done all game long because they've scratched and slashed their way to stay in this game. And by now, we should all realize they're not going away. Now the pressure again swings to their defense because they're going to need to find some way to get the ball back. Now Cade York for the extra point. And it's up through the goal post. It's 17-10. That time, a nine-play drive. And it's Amari Cooper who finishes it off with a touchdown reception. He sends this one away. Fielded right around the eight. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. After the touchdown we just saw, we have a brand new ball game. And now look at the situation. You've got plenty of time on the clock. Defensively, they have three timeouts. So do you run the football here or do you throw it? I think you have that full conversation with your offensive unit. And you tell them, here's the situation. They've got all their timeouts. So we are not going to play this conservatively. We've got to attack them. We've got to make them use those, gain the ground that we need in order to put this game away. If you think we're just going to run it three times and punt it, you got another thing coming. Yeah, I and mean, by the way, also the two-minute warning in play, so essentially four timeouts left. They have to be aggressive here. Tackle by Jordan Elliott. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage, use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Miles Garrett. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. Even for a guy who many believe has become the standard in the league, 
Miles Garrett's 2021 was special. 16 sacks at a team record and were third in the NFL, and he made first team all pro to the surprise of no one. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. They're going to look to throw. He'll drop this one down to mix it. And down he'll go at the 25. That's going to bring up fourth down. Only a gain of two there. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion, and you count on your D to make it stand up. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They're looking at a fourth down now as they try to hold on to this lead for dear life. Here's Kevin Huber now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. A nice little juke. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Browns will take over first and 10. So now the Browns down on the scoreboard. And time, a huge factor. They need a touchdown to the PAT to tie it as they come up first and 10. set completes to Najoku yeah, that's good for a gain of six and it's second down not a position where they absolutely have to rush right now but they definitely have to pick up the tempo a bit clock running here under 90 seconds to go now Brissette and the comeback may stall out. It's intercepted. Picked up by Jesse Bates. And the Bengals are going to take possession of the football. Partner's bad enough when you just can't hold on to the football. But when your quarterback's throwing it to the other team, that's three interceptions now, four turnovers for the game. You really have no chance to win the football game. So now the Bengal offensive unit back out onto the field. And this game not quite in hand yet. We'll likely see all three timeouts defensively and then reassess where we are. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. Oh, no, he lost the football. And this is picked up by the Browns. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. I know when you're looking at the scoreboard clock, we're getting near the end of this game. But they were in what was really called four-minute offense. And that's practice, being taking care of the football, taking time off the clock, not giving them a chance to come back. The bottom line is, what did I say in the beginning? Taking care of the football. That didn't happen. Didn't do it a costly turnover. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. And the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. Now 
Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. left it's Mixon trying to run inside but nothing there now a second timeout called for by the defense as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next Here we go. and it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively six DBs in the game Throwing now is Joe Burrow. He finds his running back, Mixon. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with a minute six left to go in the game. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This to perhaps salt this one away. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good. And this will remain a one touchdown game. the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. So now, Charles, this drive, maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. The Browns drive about to get started. Here comes another drive from this unit, and Charles, they're coming off a costly mistake on the last possession, an interception in a game that is very close right now. Well, as we know, they all sting no matter what the situation, but in a one-possession game, that'll hurt a little bit more. But this is an excellent opportunity to make up for it on this drive. I just don't expect them to try and take huge gambles to make up that momentum in a hurry. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Here's Brissett. Eluding the pressure right. And that's going to be caught by Peoples-Jones. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. I tell you, it has not been his best day throwing the football. He really needs to piece something together here. All will be forgiven if he leads them into the end zone. Clock now under 30 ticks and running. On first down, they'll run with Hunt. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Partner, you've got about 20 coaches on your payroll, but there's 60,000 of them in the stands. I don't think any of them like that play. And the later we go, it's starting to sound like 100,000 in here. One final shot. They'll look to throw. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. What a game we were treated to in this one. And on that final play, they had a chance. They had the ball just beyond midfield for one final shot, but couldn't get it done, and they suffered the loss. Yeah, and you mentioned how they had a chance on that final play, and getting it to midfield gave them that opportunity, hoping they could find their way to the end zone and make that miracle happen. A really good ending to an entertaining contest, though. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughton. You've been watching the NFL 
on EA Sports. With that, we say good night from Cleveland.